Hey guys, so today I have a video that I have been meaning to film for a very long time now, and this is part of my Cloth Diapering 101 playlist, which I will always have a link down below to if you wanna see other videos in this little series. But today we're gonna try and do like super basic, definitely like the first day of class, <laughs> Cloth 101, and talk about a lot of things like washing, types of diapers, uh, what you do with the poo, what you do when you're out of the house, um, just a lot of stuff. I have a whole little list here of things that we're going to cover today, and I hope that it covers everything you need to know if you have even thought of the idea of cloth diapering your baby. So, let's hop in, and I hope this is helpful. So I have been cloth diapering for about four years now. Now my littlest did potty train over the summer and we have had some potty regression here lately. So I have had a little bit of a break from diapers since last summer, but uh, I still love looking at my diapers. I love talking about diapers. I still have this channel where I answer questions about people's diaper situations all the time. So my world is definitely a lot about cloth diapers, even though technically neither of my boys are in diapers right now. And I've done lots of reviews here on this channel. I have tons of material. If you guys want to see anything about cloth diapers, just let me know in the comments. And I have lots of videos about a lot of things. So I like to think that I know a little bit about cloth diapers. So I feel like hopefully I can help you guys in this video. I really just want to be as helpful as possible for people who are very, very new to cloth diapering and even just thinking about it or considering it. So let's hop in and talk. Now, modern day cloth diapers are very different from what your grandma used or what you may even be thinking of when you first hear the term cloth diapers. Things are quite different now and there are so many different options on the market. Now I do have a separate video all about all the different types of cloth diapers there are. I know that gets very overwhelming when you are first coming to this con community and you're thinking about cloth diapering. Just the options are like, a lot. So I have a video separate about all the different options out there. This little guy that I'm holding just so happens to be an all-in-one from Diaper Right, and I love this guy, but this is just an example so you can see that diapers today are not what they used to be. They have this waterproof outside part, and then there are some inserts inside here to absorb all of the pee, little gussets to hold everything in. They are adjustable for your kiddo to grow into. Diapers are very different than they used to be. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about cloth diapering from beginners. So let's just go through and kind of answer some things that I get all the time. Like first of all, storing dirty diapers. What do you do once baby pees in this thing? Then what? If it is just a pee, I will throw it into a little plastic, tiny um, laundry basket type thing. And just like that, it will sit like in our bathroom or in the boys' room or wherever it is that we are changing diapers. That's if it's a pee. If there is a poo in here, we will take it to the toilet and spray the poo out before then tossing into the basket as well. There are things available called diaper sprayers and you just hook it up to the water line on your toilet and then it has a little hook that it rests in like on your toilet tank and you can just you know, take it out, spray into the toilet, spray all the poo away, put it back in its spot, and you're good to go. So I love my diaper sprayer. I have one called Baby Mojo's. It's from Amazon. It's one of the more affordable ones. It's like maybe 25 bucks or something last time I checked. But a lot of people live and do without diaper sprayers and they just take the diaper and will dunk it into the toilet and just kind of like swish it around until all the poo comes off. You can also just sit it in the toilet and let it sit for a few minutes and then the water in the toilet kind of like breaks down all of the poo and you can more easily swish it in a few minutes, like five, 10 minutes or something. You can do that as well. Now, all of the diapers are gonna pile up in this little basket until wash day. I would recommend washing every two or three days. I would not go more than four days washing your diapers because since they are saturated with pee, the longer you let them sit, the stronger the pee ammonia smell is going to be and the harder it is going to be to get them clean. So don't let them go too long sitting dirty 
before wash day. Now, you may not like the idea of having your diapers just all exposed like this in a little basket. If you change in the living room or something, or in the downstairs bathroom, you probably don't want that being on display for all of your guests and everything. So you can definitely put dirty diapers into these things called wet bags, and they have bigger sizes than this. This is just like a medium-ish size that you can latch on to something, like maybe the toilet paper roll holder thing, or like on a cabinet knob, or on the doorknob or something like that. This can just kind of hang in the bathroom or wherever it is that you're doing the changing. So this is a waterproof bag, so it'll hold the diapers inside there. Like I said, they do have bigger ones. You can store inside of here so nobody really sees all of your exposed diapers if that's something that bothers you. I will say, honestly, letting the air circulate and get to your diapers will reduce the smell. Not that diapers smell, you know? You're not going to have gross poo smelling house if you're cloth diapering, I promise you. <laughs> but just letting the air circulate around them keeps down like the pee smell of the diapers. And I know it sounds counterintuitive. You would think if it was trapped inside of this bag that it would trap in the smell as well. But honestly, having it exposed to the air like this is just better as, as far as smell is concerned. But remember guys, disposables have their own unique smell too. So it's not a big deal. When you have a baby in your house, there's gonna be baby smells, okay? Now, wash routine is a big controversial thing in the cloth diaper community. I will leave you a link down below to my particular wash routine. Like I said, everybody's got their own opinions about it. Basically, I would just say do a rinse first, do a heavy wash, do a rinse at the end. That's it. Don't add fabric softener because that's adding stuff that can build up in the fibers of the diaper. And don't use like those dryer sheets when you throw everything in the dryer. And I personally always take things that have the waterproof layer and hang dry them as opposed to throwing in the dryer. But a lot of people just throw everything in the dryer and don't find it to be a big deal. I just worry about like, you know, it's kind of like a plasticky material and I don't want it to delaminate. I don't want it to get hurt and stop working <laughs> going through the dryer, but a lot of people do. A lot of people just throw everything in the dryer. So if you do want to watch that video, I will leave it down below if you are wondering just basically how I do my full wash routine. Now remember how we were talking about spraying out the poopy diapers. You cannot just throw poo into the washing machine. You need to spray it out as much as possible. Get all those little tiny bits off of the diaper before you throw it into a wash cycle. Now there are things like diaper liners that can kind of help you with the poo situation. This here is just a super cheapo fleece blanket that I cut into these rectangular shapes to lay inside of diapers. If your baby has relatively solidish poos, you can just scoop this off of the diaper and use this to spray out. So you don't have a big bulky, you know, all these different layers and like a big thing to spray out. If you're lucky and baby just poos on this little thing, you can just wash this out more easily instead of having to spray down the whole freaking giant thing. You can just spray off this. They also sell um, disposable liners that you can use and they claim to be flushable, even though I, from everyone I have heard, you really, it's really not good for the city sewage system <laughs> to be putting those in the toilets, but people claim they're flushable. Now that's when baby has more solid poos. When baby is starting to eat baby food or other food, that's when you need to start spraying out the diapers. In the newborn days, you don't even have to spray out their newborn poo because it's water soluble. It will come straight out in the wash, which is amazing. You have so many things on your mind, so many things to worry about. It's so stressful having a newborn, but that, is one blessing of having a newborn that is super easy. You can just throw their poopy diapers into the wash like it's a pee diaper. So what do we do when we leave the house? Because you're not gonna be able to just throw the diaper away like you would a disposable if you are out at the park or at someone's house or just out of the house at the restaurant or grocery shopping or whatever. You're not gonna throw your diaper away. You need to get it home with you. So 
That's why we have these wet bags. Once again, I carry many of these in our diaper bag. And if you have a wet diaper, just throw it into this bag and zip it up and take it home and then throw it into the wash or throw it into the little pail when you get home from your outing. Now, if you have a super duper wet diaper, you may want to kind of double up on it, throw it in this bag and then take this bag and throw it inside of another wet bag. You can also totally just use grocery bags like plastic Walmart bags, those work fine. I always keep those in the diaper bag as well just in case we forget these. So if it's just a pee diaper, all you have to do is throw it into the bag, zip it up, throw it in the diaper bag, or I actually like to hook it on the outside of the diaper bag just so I remember it when we get home. It's not like inside the bag. It's hanging right on the edge of the bag so I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, we had a dirty diaper. Let's take care of that and not forget it in the bag until our next outing, you know? <laughs> so I like to hook it on the outside of the diaper bag. Now, if it's a poo while you're out of the house, I would roll it up. So like you would a disposable diaper, you just kind of roll it. So you've got the diaper like this. Take this part up and roll it up, and then you can take most, a lot of diapers have a crossover snap here. So there's one little in snap and it's all rolled up and it's poopy and yucky, but it's contained. And then I would throw this inside of the wet bag so that when we get home, I can then take this guy out and spray it out in the toilet and then add it to the little basket or add it to the wash or whatever it is. So poo diapers, I would recommend rolling up like so and just not even really dealing with the diaper out when you're out of the house. Like I wouldn't take this into a public restroom and then like, swish it in their toilet or anything. I would just wait till we get home. Now, if you're gonna be cloth diapering anyway, you might as well start using some cloth wipes instead of disposable wipes. So you can use any kind of little washcloth type deals. If you get those like 10 packs of super cheapo baby washcloths at your baby shower, those can totally be used as wipes. So we totally use cloth wipes at home and we just put them inside of an old like Huggies wipes container put some water in there, dampen them, and then just use them straight out of there. I just use water 99% of the time, and I've never had any issues with mold or anything weird going on or no funky smells. It's always been perfectly fine for our family to just use straight up water. Now there are products that you can buy that are like a wipes solution, and you can make your own wipes solution, and I do have a video for that, and I will leave it down below if you guys are interested. So you can add like soap and oils and like stuff like that that to your wipes container, but good old water works perfectly fine. <laughs> you can also, if you don't want them to just be sitting around damp, you can just have a spray bottle and spray each one individually when you're ready to use them. So that's another option as well. We've done that before in the past. Now, one thing I do kind of want to mention are cloth diaper safe diaper creams, rash creams. There is a website I will leave linked down below. I can't remember the name of it, but she goes through and updates every once, or, once in a while about cloth diaper creams, which ones are okay for cloth and which ones are not, and she can warn you about different ingredients you want to kind of avoid. So there is a list out there of cloth diaper safe diaper creams. I feel like the things that we are supposed to be avoiding are like fish oil and petroleum. I feel like those are the two things that are kind of not good to be putting straight on your diapers because you don't want the diapers to repel water when they get like a super oily substance like petroleum or something on the fabric then the water will bead up instead of soaking into the fabric so that's something that you want to avoid you might have to kind of take a look at which diaper creams are going to be okay for your diapers but I will say in the past, when I first started cloth diapering, a lot of people said zinc oxide was bad for cloth diapers, and it is not. So take everything with a grain of salt, I guess. This here is the Hello Bella one. I actually haven't used this yet, but it has 40% zinc oxide in there, and it is on the approved list on that website that I mentioned. Um, I just bought this for our new baby who is due in a couple of months here. Um, so yeah, there are diapers that, there are creams that you should not use on cloth diapers and there are creams that are okay to use. But zinc oxide will stain a diaper, but it's just going to stain it white. So if you already have a diaper that is white on the inside, 
it will just have a little bit brighter spot like where their butt goes so it's not a big deal to me and it does come out with a handful of washes but if you are afraid of having diaper cream stains in your diapers or if you are using kind of like a questionable diaper cream you can always just use liners or disposable liners to like protect your baby or protect the diaper from the stuff on your baby's butt so baby would be touching this instead of directly onto the fibers of the diaper now you definitely want to change baby every two hours or less and that doesn't count for like overnight you're not going to wake up a sleeping baby to change them overnight but you do want to change them about every two hours or so during the day and that was something i don't know why but that was something that kind of turned me off in the beginning. I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds like so many diaper changes. Two hours, like, oh my goodness, baby is gonna be changed all the time. But now, uh, as a mom who's cloth diapered two kiddos, I'm like, why would you ever go more than two hours? Like, that's like a really long time to keep a baby in their diaper. <laughs> so, the internet, everything you read in the cloth diaper community says change, two change every two hours. Just listen to that. Try to change every two hours as long as baby is up and doing stuff, you know? And it's not a big deal. It's not like you're changing all of the stinking time. It's not, it, I don't know why I thought it was like so often before I started cloth diapering, <laughs> but that's how I felt. So I did say that I have a whole other video all about different types of diapers if you're still looking at which system you want to go with. I will leave a link down below to that so you can kind of see my um, review of each individual type of cloth diaper and how they all kind of compare but I wanted to go and kind of break this guy down for you just as a basic idea of a cloth diaper so this here is like I said in the beginning a diaper right all in one and I just want to show you a little bit about it so you have the snaps on here which is how you're going to be attaching it to baby instead of the little like velcro little loops that you get on disposable diapers you have snaps on here but they do sell cloth diapers that have velcro if you find that might be a little bit easier for you you can see that you have a lot more snaps down here and you might be like what's that about these are the rise settings so you can make the diaper bigger or smaller for what size baby you've got going on so you can put it on a little bit smaller of a rise setting. You can also use these snaps up top as crossover snaps. So if you need like a little tiny waist for a baby, a tiny newborn, you can cross over here and then you can snap these on top of this so that it gives you a little bit of a smaller waist in here. Now the rise settings here are going to help you get a better little fit on the leg holes, which is something that you need to worry about in the newborn days and the baby days. You want everything to be nice and tight so that no poo is escaping. So this is all the waterproof outside part of the diaper. And inside we have the absorbent part. So these are like bamboo and cotton material inside. And they actually snap in. You've got two little inserts that snap into this diaper. There's a little bit of absorbency here in the back of it. You've got some flaps that just kind of hold the inserts in place here. You don't necessarily have to tuck them or anything, but there you go. You've got the leg gussets that keep the poo in. You've got elastic on the butt side to keep the poo in. But yeah, that's just kind of a basic all-in-one type diaper little system here in case you guys were wondering. I have gotten questions about the rise setting in particular. I've had people ask me at what weight range would you move to the next size and that is all going to just depend on your baby's weight, your baby's shape, just how old they are, if you need smaller leg holes or if you need a wider top. Like everything is just going to depend on how your baby is shaped in particular. So I can't give you weight ranges for when you're going to be using each set of these. But of course, if you're starting out in the little baby days, you're gonna start out at the smallest one. In a few months, you can move out to the bigger one. And then once they're a little bit bigger, you can move it all the way out so it's fully unsnapped. And sometimes when you're kind of in between stages, you can go back and forth. You might get to a fully snapped out position on your baby and a few weeks later, you're like, this is just giving me too much of a leg gap. And so you might wanna go back again. And you know, that's what's so nice about cloth diapers that you can adjust them all the time you know it's not like I adjust it here and so now we can only use it here you can do whatever you want every single time you change the baby's diaper 
Now that's another thing I wanted to talk about is toddler days versus newborn days. Most babies are not going to fit into a one size diaper like this. A lot of companies offer one size diapers and newborn diapers. Newborn diapers will usually fit for the first like three-ish months maybe. At least that's how it went with my boys. My boys were on like the bigger side though, just FYI. And then once you get a little bit bigger, they can go into the one size and these should last them all the way up until potty training at age two or three. And some brands even have bigger than one size diapers. So just generally speaking, you're gonna be looking at one size diapers for toddlers and then newborn size for newborns. Now, even though the newborn diapers may fit for like two, three months, baby could also probably start fitting into one size diaper, maybe at a month or six or eight weeks or so. But I did just wanna mention, most one size diapers are probably not going to fit little tiny newborns. And really the big issues that come with that are going to be how small you can get the leg holes on a diaper and whether or not the top of the diaper is irritating baby's umbilical stump. If you have a baby who loses their umbilical stump within a couple of days, just a week or so, one size diapers may be able to work really early for you, but if you have babies like my babies who kept them for like two weeks, it's a pain in the butt. You can't really put the one size diapers on the baby because there's the it's just covering up their umbilical stump and you want their umbilical stump to be able to breathe. You don't want anything rubbing on it or irritating it until it falls off. So that's those are the two things that you really need to consider if you're trying to do one size on a newborn. How tiny you can get the leg holes because little tiny newborns have those skinny little legs <laughs> and whether or not this dips down low enough to not irritate the belly button. Now there are definitely ways to very affordably cloth diaper newborns and bigger kids. So if you want to see any videos about that, once again, I will leave some links down below. Okay, that's everything that's on my list. And this is a big video. <laughs> I really didn't expect it to go this long. I'm really, really sorry if you were looking something that was a little, looking for something that was a little more concise. Uh, I, I wanted to cover a lot of things and I really didn't expect to be speaking for this long. So I hope it was still a little bit helpful for you guys. Of course, if there are other questions you have about cloth diapers, leave them down below and maybe I could do a part two to this really 101 basics video if you guys are interested in that. So I do hope this was helpful. I really hope this was helpful. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I have lots of resources linked in the description below so you guys can check out all of those different videos and sources and stuff like that. I'll also leave down there other cloth diaper YouTubers who know so many things that you may want to know. I'll leave their channels down below as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you next time.